there's one feature that you need to understand to write faster SQL Server queries, and that is the execution plan. In this video, I'll explain what it is, how to view it, and how to understand it. An execution plan is a representation of how the database will run the query. It's the first step you take when looking to improve a query, as it shows you a lot of helpful information and areas for improvement. Here is a sample query we'll use. It's based on a fictional bookstore, and it selects some details about an order and the customer for orders placed in Canada. I'm also using SQL Server Management Studio for this video. If you use another SQL editor, the concepts will be the same, but the process and what is shown may be a bit different. Let's run this query. Here are the results. How do we see the execution plan? In SSMS, we click on this button on the toolbar here with the three little boxes called Display Estimated Execution Plan. This will show the execution plan for the query. If you're using another SQL editor, then there should be a similar button on the toolbar or in the menu to see it. We can see some boxes and lines here. What does it all mean? If you want to understand all of the terms in an SQL Server execution plan, when they are used, and what to look out for, check out my quick PDF guide on SQL Server execution plans. You can get it by visiting databasestar.com slash SQL Server plan, or clicking the link in the description. Let's look at this specific plan. We read this diagram by reading the boxes from left to right. Each shape represents a step that the database takes, and there are arrows between each step. The steps can be related to different parts of our query. We can match them up to understand what is happening. Let's do that now. The first step the database takes with this query is the one on the top right. It's labelled Clustered Index Scan, and below it is the term country.pkcountry. What does this mean? The clustered index scan is the type of step that is performed. Essentially, it uses an index to read data from the table. Which table is it reading? This step is reading the country table, which we can see here on the second line. The index used is named here, pk underscore country. This is actually the index on the primary key of the table. I can tell because the name of the index is clear, pk underscore country. I recommend naming indexes and keys using a specific format for this reason, so we can tell by looking at it that it's the primary key for the country table. You can hover over any of these steps to see more information about the step. So the first step reads the data from the country table. This relates to the from clause and the part that mentions the country table. The second step here is the one below it, also called a clustered index scan. This step reads the data from the address table, which we can see here, using an index called pk underscore address. This is the index on the primary key of the table. So we've got the country data and address data. The next step is the hash match step here. This is next because the arrows leading into it come from the two steps we just looked at. The width of the arrows indicates how much data is being used. The small arrow from the country step means there is not a lot of data being sent, but the arrow from the address table is wider. This hash match step is a way for the database to combine the data from two tables. So after this step, we have a set of data that combines both the country and address tables. This step is the join clause that joins the country and address tables. After this hash match step, we follow the arrow to the left to see another hash match step. But this second hash match step has another arrow coming in, which we can see is from a box at the bottom called clustered index scan on the cust order table. This gets data using an index on the cust order table, and the index is called pk underscore cust order, which is the primary key on the table. The hash match step we just saw will combine the data we already have from the address and country tables to this cust order table to create one large set of data. This matches to the join clause in the query that combines the cust order table to the address table. What's next? The arrow leads to something called nested loops, but that also has another arrow leading into it. The step that starts this arrow is called clustered index seek. This is a slightly different type of step, but it still uses an index to get data from a table. It gets data from the customer table using the pk customer index. 
This is related to the from clause in the query that mentions the customer table. The nested loop step here is like the hash match. It combines data we have already, which is from the address, country and cust order tables, to the new table we're getting here which is customer. This can be matched to the join clause that joins the customer table to the rest of the query. Finally, we have a select step, which shows all of the data in our query. You might be wondering, this is helpful, but how do we know what part is slow? We can use a concept called cost, which is a number that represents the effort involved in running the query. It's not a measure of time or reads. The lower the cost value, the better. It can be used to compare steps within a plan or different plans to each other. In SSMS, an easy way to see the cost value is to look underneath each step. It shows the cost and then a percentage, and the percentage is the amount of effort this step takes compared to the entire query. So a cost value of 50% takes half of the effort of the entire query. What about this specific query? We can see values of 2%, 5%, 13% and so on for each of the steps. Which step has the highest value? It's this hash match step here in the middle. It has a cost of 35%. This means that the hash match step here is responsible for 35% of the overall query's cost. If we can reduce the cost or effort of this step, it could improve the overall query. Learning how to read this execution plan in SQL Server is helpful and is the first step when looking to improve the performance of a query. If you want to see an example of improving a query in SQL, check out this video here where I demonstrate how to speed up a query by using a particular technique. Thanks for watching.